Hey YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul. Today's video, we'll be talking about the update that came to Logic last week, and that is Logic Pro 10.4.2. Now it is a minor update, but there are a lot of major improvements in this minor update. Here is the complete list right here of what's new in the point two update. Uh, the sound library can now be relocated to an external storage device. Finally, this has come to Logic, and you could do that with InLogic itself. A couple weeks ago, I did a video on, on how to do that with a symbolic link. Now you don't have to do that. It's done right in Logic. A lot of improvements to Smart Tempo, and I'm going to show you that in a moment. Uh, we got some cool new automation features as well that I'm really excited for. I'm not sure why, but it excites me. And um, you got a new way to drag in samples into Alchemy. Right here, you got these hot zones that are now in Alchemy. So I'm going to show you all the new stuff that I find will help your workflow. So let's just jump right into it. The first of which being the sound library that you can now move to an external hard drive. If you never did that and all your stock sounds are on your main hard drive, I recommend moving it to an external drive to do that. Select Logic Pro X in the top left hand corner. Go to Sound Library and select Relocate Sound Library. Now mine is grayed out because I did use the symbolic link method, but all you have to do is select that and in the drop down menu or in the next window, just select your hard drive and click OK and then Logic will do the rest for you. If for whatever reason you want to move back the sound library to your main hard drive, just open that up, select Macintosh HD or whatever your hard drive is called and Logic will move it back there. You can move it back and forth as many times as you like. Now, the one downside to this is that you can't use one sound library for multiple computers with Logic. You have to have individual ones for each one. And uh, maybe in a future update, they'll allow you to have one sound library. So you just carry your external hard drive and just plug it, plug it, plug it, and it's good to go. But uh, for now, one sound library per computer with Logic. Hopefully that changes in the future. All right, next up is some smart tempo stuff. Um, huge updates here. Number one, if you open up a session and you just want to set your tempo, usually reach for the tap tempo and just go from there. Sometimes you have a melody or pattern in your head that you can't quite sort of tap to. I know it sounds weird, but it happens to me sometimes. And I'd rather just play in what's in my mind and get the tempo that way. Well, now Logic lets you do that. You can record in some MIDI and Logic will auto detect that tempo that you recorded in. So to do that, go over up to your transport controls, change keep to auto. Uh, we're going to go ahead and bring in, let's bring in the piano here. And we're just going to go ahead and play out some chords. Let's go ahead and record on my keyboard. And you're going to see that Logic will automatically map out what I'm recording and create sort of a tempo map to it. So as you can see, Logic created a four bar pattern, which that should have been, and it sort of tempo mapped what I recorded at. Now I recorded sort of live, not locked to a tempo, so my natural BPM will stray a little bit, as you can see right here. Starts around 104. Gets a little faster at 105. So you may wanna go ahead and quantize that if you wanted to, but uh, as you can see, we didn't have to do a tap tempo, we could just record in a pattern, melody or drum pattern and Logic will automatically detect the tempo which we recorded at. And then what I will probably use, I just open up my tempo list. I usually want to go to tempo. I just select all of them and click delete. And then I'd find a tempo that was maybe the average of that or something that I like and just use the one as a starting point. And then you could change from there. But it's sort of takes the tap tempo to another level. You just record in your pattern and Logic will automatically detect whatever you're recording in, it's tempo. So staying in line with the smart tempo improvements, I'm just gonna show you how it and how Logic will handle multiple stems that you import into your session. Logic will automatically detect each audio file, the tempo that it has, and sort of lock them to the grid in your session. You can either follow the tempo of the stems or create a tempo from up here. So before we do that, I'm gonna show you how to just, or just show you to make sure that you have some settings in place. Select Smart Tempo Project Settings from this transport bar over here. And uh, you're gonna make sure that you have set new recordings to 
on aligned bars and beats and set imported audio files to on aligned bars and beats. Make sure those are on always because, well, it's good to have on. So let's go ahead and close that. Uh, we're gonna mute this for now. And we're gonna go ahead and drag in some loops that I've created in a play pack I put out a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you can see that the loop pattern is at 160 beats per minute and my session is at 112 beats per minute. Let's go ahead and select all these. We're gonna go ahead and drag these in. We're gonna create new tracks. I'm gonna say all selected files are stems from one project. I'm gonna click okay. So Logic has put that in place over here. And um, so right off the bat, you see it's perfectly aligned on the ones and at the ends, there's no stray sort of end at the audio file. It's completely locked to the grid as you would say in Ableton Live. So as you can see, Logic detected the tempo at 160 beats per minute. And right now we're playing it slower at 112 beats per minute and the pitch of those samples have not changed, just the tempo. So we can go ahead and speed that up to its original tempo. As you can see, everything is locked to the grid and no more do you have to manually adjust the regions to the grid. Let's say we wanna do it a little bit slower. So that's how easy it is now to work with audio files and logic. This is a huge update and uh, it really brings it up to par for a lot of DJs out there or remixing or remix producers out there. Just drag in your stuff, everything gets locked and you can remix and create sets from there. So really big improvements to the smart tempo and how it handles audio files. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you some of the a cool new automation feature that I find is really cool. But before we do that, let's go ahead and uh, just bring up the mixer window right here by hitting X on our keyboard. And you'll see along the top, we have this sense on faders feature now. And uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory. You're essentially putting the sense, so this over here, onto the fader over here. So if I turn this on and I select bus one, you'll see that now my send which used to be on the knob here, is linked to my fader over here. So you can do better adjustments that way. If I want to adjust my fade or my bus two, just select that and I adjust my bus two. And that works on multiple tracks. So if I have bus two on multiple tracks, let's put bus one on this one. You'll see I can adjust bus two all at the same time. If I want to adjust my bus one, here's my bus ones. very simple and easy to work with you also have if i right click let's turn this off if i right click on our automation track we can do independent pan which sort of sense a pan value as well as the uh the volume level and we can turn up we of course can adjust that as well so right now we're adjusting our pan level so now to the thing that i thought was really cool in automation and i don't know if it's just me that gets excited about this stuff but um it's something that logic had that really helps when you're working with automation. I'm gonna AL my keyboard. I'm just gonna quickly automate this right over here. All right, just a dummy automation, nothing too crazy. But before, if I were to take this last point and try and drag it to here, it would not lock as you just saw it right there. Right now it locks, so now it gives you a little it locks to that point so you get really precise automation points. Before, this would never lock. This would kind of, you sort of have to eyeball it and it's always been a little bit off. But now, this really excites me and I don't know why it locks. And that's the way I always wanted it. In Ableton Live, this is how it did it. And that's how I worked with automation in Live and it worked beautifully. All right, next up, let's go ahead and um, let's just delete all these tracks here. Clean up a bit our mess that we've created. Create a new software instrument track. And uh, what we're gonna do here is um, bring in Logic's Alchemy. I'm gonna show you a new way in which you can uh, import samples into Alchemy that is just introduced in point two. So we're gonna go to Advanced and we're gonna go to File, Initialize Preset. And off the bat, you get this cool little thing that helps a lot actually. Uh, if you're not using a certain source, 
as you can see, B, C, D is all grayed out. The only one we're using right now is A. And if you're not using it, it gets grayed out. That helps out a lot. So um, I'm being serious there, not being uh, facetious or anything. Uh, so what we're gonna do here is just drag on a sample and show you how easy it is to work with samples in Alchemy and use it sort of like a sampler instrument. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in this 808 from the drum kit I put out a couple weeks ago. Um, all you have to do is just drag it. And as you can see, when you drag it on top of this, you get these four options. You wanna add it as an additive, granular, spectral, or a sampler. In this case, I wanna use it as a sampler. Now, if I go ahead and play it on my keyboard. That 808 is automatically mapped on my keyboard. And as you see it right here, it's very easy just to work with samples that way. And the thing that's great with Alchemy is that as soon as you import that sample in, it auto detects its pitch and sort of stretches it across the keyboard for you which is really cool. So that is a cool new feature to Alchemy. It makes working with sort of 808s, if you will, like this one, or any other loop pattern samples, really easy to work with. And uh, that is a welcome update. And lastly, that I think will be really helpful to all of us here is the notes feature. So if I go ahead and open that up, and uh, we always had this notepad here in which we can sort of type and make notes on our session here. But now we have the ability to import pictures into here and uh, take screenshots of settings or whatever it may be, pictures, you can just add it in this notepad here and uh, you're good to go. Now, this is really useful because if you're in a studio setup, sometimes the analog gear, like the outboard gear that you have, there's no presets, you always have to turn to the exact setting. So if you want to sort of take a snapshot of what you had and what you used in the session, you just take a picture of that and you sort of put it right here within the project and everything is sort of combined and linked nicely. So that's a really good addition. Uh, also, you could just take screenshots as well of certain settings in your, whatever you want to take a screenshot of. So if I just go here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click right over here. We're gonna to go to capture selection from screen. And let's say we wanna just take this over here. And then it gets added over here. And you can even mark that up or do whatever you need to do it, but at least that screenshot is right here. And uh, the bigger you make it, the bigger the image will be. That's pretty cool here that you can save screenshots just like that in your notepad. Like, like I said earlier, it's really nice to have that if you're in a studio setup and you're using outboard gear and you wanna take a picture of what you used in the session and you can place it right in the notes so it's always there whenever you open it up. Just take it on your phone and then bring it into uh, to your notepad right over here. So that's a nice addition to have. Not major, but uh, a nice little touch that now we can have in Logic. So that's pretty much all the cool stuff that you should know about Logic's latest update, the point two update. Uh, if I did miss anything, let me know in the comments below. But uh, for the most part, the smart tempo is really greatly improved. So take a look at that. Working with samples in Alchemy has improved. It's a lot easier to get those in. And uh, of course, if you don't like to use the tap tempo, just record in a MIDI idea and Logic will auto map that tempo for you. Uh, so a lot of great features. It is a minor update, like I said, but a major one in a lot of ways. Let me know what you think about the point two update in the comment section below. If you just want to chat, let's talk below as well. And if you are new to Ami Music Mogul, remember thumbs up, share this video, and of course hit that subscribe button for more good videos like this one. I'll talk to y'all soon. Later. Peace.